Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome to yet another live stream of the D.A.R.E. engine. Last time, we finished up the physics system. So if I run, you see a whole bunch of things bouncing around, or maybe just one thing, depending on what I have commented out right now. Oh no, you do see a whole bunch of things bouncing around, doing stuff. So yeah, it is awesome. We have working physics, and everything's great. So, rendering is done. So there's our, oops, there's a rendering checklist, as you can see. It is done. So I'm going to go ahead and merge you down, and I'm going to pause you. And our physics checklist, our physics list is done, so I'm going to go ahead and merge you down. So really, there's only, there's just a couple more things I want to do before I really want to start, I really want to try making a game with this, seeing how the system's working out. Probably the biggest one is audio. So just being able to get some sort of sound playing in the engine, so we can play sounds, do whatever. Hello, Paradise Pixel. Welcome to the live stream. <clears throat> so, because I'm a lazy programmer like that, I'm going to be basing my audio code... Wait, wait. <laughs> there you go. Off of my, the audio code I used in the Wolfenstein 3D clone. So if we go to Wolfenstein original Wolf 3D clone, yeah, this one. And here somewhere I have audio. Yeah, right here. Audio util. The only real audio thing I have, which, interestingly enough, doesn't seems to have some stuff common down, but that's okay. I'll worry about that in a moment. And yeah, really all I care about here is the play audio thing, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this class. And yeah, let's just go ahead and put stuff together. So in the source, I'm going to create... Yeah, I'm going to create a new thing under core... And, yeah, because I really don't have a better way to do this until I, unless I want to make a really advanced audio engine, which I don't, I'm just going to use the audio util thing. I'm just going to create audio util.java. And this is going to be basically what I have in Wolf 3D, at least start out with. So, first off, so package. You have to reformat everything because for some reason GitHub doesn't preserve formatting. Other than that, it seems to be pretty okay. So, that's right, Jake. It's completely live. I, you can talk to me. I can respond to you. All that sort of thing. Only thing is right now it does seem to have about one minute of delay between well, my, me saying something and it actually showing up on the stream. But other than that, it's yeah, it's pretty much live like that. Hello, Raymond. Welcome to the live stream. So yeah, I'm just going to take all this stuff and uncomment it. I can... Unfortunately, it's slightly painful to do this by hand, but oh well, it's no big deal. There. Volume whoop, volume mount, volume stuff, and clip. Don't need to worry about that. Okay, good. That seems to be just about okay. Only other thing is... Hmm. No, actually, I have, I have a new idea. Maybe I should make this like an audio clip class, but I'll worry about that in a moment. Right now, there's something else I want to get here, which is, a, I believe, under resource loader.java. Yeah. Okay, I know what I'm going to do now. I'm not actually going to use the audio YouTube class, despite what I've just said. I'm going to create new class I'm going to call audioclip.java. And this is where I'm going to be doing that real stuff. And Oh, I don't need a sequencer anymore. You can go away. Hello. Martin, right? It's Martin. Yeah, hello. Welcome to the live stream. And hello, Minecraft Master, and hello, Nibby Banana. Welcome, welcome one, welcome all to the live stream. <clears throat> well, anyways. I'm changing this to the audio clip class so that I can actually play audio with it. Or, well, because this will enca enca I'm taking it to an audio clip class so this will sort of encapsulate one audio clip that we can play in the game. There, that's what I'm trying to say. And to do that, I'm really just going to be stealing code from the Wolf 3D clone. 
as I've said. So where are you? I'm looking for load. Here we are, load audio. And also because I'm lazy, I'm gonna. In fact, just gonna import javax.sound.sample.star because, as I've said before, I'm a lazy program like that. That's right. This is live. Welcome, Mr. Awesome Cube, to the live stream. Anyways, load audio. This is, I'm going to be changing this to my constructor, so I want the constructor to load an audio clip. Oh, and manual formatting. That's nice. <laughs> That's okay. So I'm going to have private final clip m clip. So this is going to be the audio clip. And this function is going to be audio clip. It's not going to be public static stuff. Well, Paradise, possibly. What sort of tutorials would you be interested in seeing me do about Linux? You know? I'm up for anything if I feel it could be actually, you know, generally useful to people. That's my policy, anyways. But yeah. Down here at the bottom, I'm going to set in clip equal to clip rather than returning a clip because of the constructor. And try catch. Going to need to format all this because, my word, <laughs> this is not looking very pretty as it is. Yeah. That's a little bit better. I'm not going to have dot slash res stuff anymore. I'm just going to do that. Let's see, which part of Java do I like the least? Hmm. I don't know. I, in general, I don't really have much of a problem with, with Java. I, it's just, I, I think it's pretty okay. So, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't really have anything I really particularly dislike about it. It's a program language designed for a specific purpose, and it does that job pretty well. I mean, I guess you want to include using Java for things it's really not intended to do, like, say, what would Java not really be intended to do? I don't, I don't know, but <laughs> I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but, yeah, you know, if you're talking about that thing, then, yeah, okay, I'm sure you can see why someone would have a problem with that, but, you know, just in general, I think it's okay. Anyway, that, I've formatted the audio clip stuff now, so I think I can load an audio clip, I'm going to make play audio just a function of it, so public void play. I'll call it start, and it's going to have some float distance. So you can make it sort of like sound. Or, you know, so that things will sound quieter in the distance. And yeah, it's I'm using GVim. Oh, I'm going to format this actually, because that's going to bother me if I don't. And... Uh, Okay, yeah, that, that works. And, yeah, okay, this should be enough to get us started. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to need some sound. And because, again, as I... Th Actually, first of all, let's make sure this build. So let's build. Ah, wrong directory. Uh, yeah. There we go. Really, Leon, making things multiplayer doesn't require that much changes. It's... It's nice to explicitly separate client and server code in your game engine. That's, but not necessary. But but I mean, really, it's basically the same. I I don't have any strong preference for that. I'm not really a very loyal programmer. I use whatever tool seems best to get the job done. So, yeah, I don't have any. I'm not much for the big. This language must be better than this because it has this feature. No, I'm sorry. I think most things are pretty okay and at the job they're intended for. So, yeah. That's my sort of standpoint on that. Don't really have preference for C++ or Java, or really any language. Okay, I guess I have preference for the languages I know, because I know them, of course. But other than that, yeah. It's whatever for me. Anyways. It looks like we've got audio clip working. Which is excellent. But... Hmm. Oh yes, I did see that paradise. I just didn't think of anything to say to it just yet. But yeah, I'll think about it. I'll see, I'll see if there's anything in particular I think is worth showing. I think, I think perhaps showing my video recording setup might be interesting, just because that is... I did a little bit of interesting stuff to get it working like I do, so that might be interesting. So, I don't know, I'll, fit, I'll think about it. I'll see what sort of things I can come up with. Anyways, I'm testing audio clip now. Oh, 
Well, Leon, that sort of, I think I misspoke a little bit. What I'm trying to say is the abstract architecture of a multiplayer game versus a single-player game is really about the same. The only big difference is you now have a concept of client and server, and it's good to explicitly specify that within the engine, like say, this part of the engine is only running the client, this part of the engine is only running the server, but really that's not completely necessary. So, so that's what I'm trying to say there. And hello, Manolito, Manolito, or Manolito, 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 something like that. Welcome to the live stream. Fine, dive into, and then I'll answer that question. So, it really depends on what you mean by dive into. <laughs> Anyways, I'm supposed to be doing something, but just sitting around asking questions like a live FAQ. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'd like to accomplish a few things in code as well. So, what am I doing? Right, I'm testing audio clip. Okay, because I'm a lazy programmer, I'm going to steal this from somewhere else. Actually, I think I know exactly where I'm going to steal it from. If I go under you, Pong, ah. Yeah, this is the Pong thing I showed in one of my update videos. I'm just going to steal the audio clips I used from there. I don't think you ever heard of them. I'm not sure you're going to hear them now because, well, I don't think the stream is recording like, my system audio. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm planning to do to test it out. Whoops. I'm just going to make things collide and make a sound. So let's see which of these sounds is the least obnoxious, because my word, we're going to be hearing a lot of this. Okay, you're not bad. Beep. Hmm. And you don't play in VLC because you're too short. Okay. Or maybe you just crashed it for some reason. Okay, never mind. That worked, though. Oh, dear. Well, I guess I'll X-kill the archive manager, because I was about to close that anyways. Yeah. Ah, nah, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's no big deal. It's usually how the live stream goes anyways. I, I do something, then I get distracted by talking to people, and then I wonder, huh, what was I doing again? <laughs> so yeah, it's just a common thing. And By the way, now I can close out of you. I'm not using you anymore. Whoop. <laughs> and of course, I minimize, not close. There we go. That's off and open? Right. I think I'm going to use beep.wav because I think it was the least obnoxious. Let me know if you heard that while it was playing. I don't think you could, but maybe if it picks it up for some bizarre reason. Anyways, I'm doing something. <laughs> Again, getting distracted. Right, I'm testing audio components. So under components, physics component. Oh, first off, just so I don't have a horrible sound of death the moment I start running, I'm going to modify this a little bit. I'm not going to use the totally everything's moving sort of thing, wherever that line of code is. Yeah, I'm going to be reformatting my test code pretty soon. In fact, I think it's going to be later in the stream. Yeah. So here, now it's just... I only have one thing bouncing around. Okay, good. So everything else is just still. All right, good. Now I can test it. All right. Thank you for letting me know. I didn't think so, but it was worth checking anyways. So unfortunately, you guys aren't going to be able to hear the audio with this, but oh well. Hopefully that's not too big of a deal. I'll see what I can do about it for, well, the next time I'm doing something with audio. If I remember, that is. It's audio clip and audio clip for... Anyways, let's make this a new audio clip. Now, I believe we should just need to pass in a file name, so let's pass in dot slash O. Oh. This is going to load it every single time, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this static. I'm going to make this S audio clip, because it's static. It starts off equal to null. All right, so I'm only going to load it if S audio clip is null. There. That's the only case I'm going to load it. This way I just don't have it loading it 10 million times. That's just obnoxious and ridiculous. I'm going to use res slash beep dot wav. And, um... Alright, let's just make sure it actually loads so they don't have any issues with that. Ah, mclip equals clip. So now the audio is actually being used and has some issues. 
And what were they again? <laughs> oh dear. Not run, just build. Package.core.star. Oh, this isn't an import statement. It's in package.core. There we go. That, that's better. And... Can't return a result value from whose type is void? Hmm? Ah. First off, semicolon. Well, me wanting to create tutorials really goes back to my Minecraft channel, Benny's Cube. It's actually a bit of an interesting story. Well, okay, it's not that interesting, but I like to imagine it is. <laughs> when I was first playing Minecraft, I, I really got into it because I saw Lauren Swain's video on the Red Game computer, the Red Game Redstone computer, in, built in Minecraft, and I thought it was awesome, and I wanted to see if I could do something like that. So I got in Minecraft, I started playing around. I had no idea what I was doing. Keep in mind, I hadn't taken any electrical engineering stuff, any science about it. I was just really screwing around because I didn't know what to do. So I, it took me like several months of scraping up the few bits of information I could and just playing around. And eventually I managed to get a working computer like that. And I said, you know what? This is really more of a pain in the ass to learn than it should be. So I'm going to go out and try making tutorials. Other people don't have to suffer at least as much as I do. Even if I completely suck at doing tutorials and such, you know, at least there'll be something out there about this. And that started my building a Minecraft computer series on Benny's Cube. And from there, after I was finished, a few number of people had joined my channel and said, my subscribers and stuff, and said, hey, we want more content. So I said, sure, I like doing this stuff. Let me do more stuff. And it snowballed from there into everything I did on Benny's Cube and eventually on here, the Benny Box. So yeah, that's the really the story of my YouTube career. And I'm 19 as of right now. In case you're wondering. A lot of people ask that for some reason. I wonder why. Probably just curiosity. Well. Alright, now anyways, I'm fixing errors and I'm getting distracted. <laughs> Cannot find symbol clip dot clip ah mclip. Because it's member variable now. Mclip dot get flow control that oh dear, let's format this a bit. And mclip that is running, mclip, mclip, mclip. Okay. New file. Not file. File not found. Okay. Not finding the file class. That's, e that's okay. I can easily fix that with import java.io.file. I know I'm too lazy to type it out myself. <laughs> okay. And it might have already been assigned. All right. I'll make it a try catch finally. How about that? There we go. So that way it just assigns it no matter what. Not that I think I need it in this case anyways, but it's nice. Hello, Ido. Welcome to the live stream. All right, so the clip seems to be loading OK. So now let's go to physics component. Let's test it out. Let's see on balance every time this is called. Oh, that's another thing. I completely forgot about this. While I was... Well, since last time, I guess, I realized that since we're doing the bounce only on X or Y, or in the corner, there's really no good reason to use the generic vector reflect code. I mean, you can if you want, but there's no good reason to. So I've just hard-coded all the possible reflections, since we were doing the check anyways to clamp X and Y. So why not? Can you type here. There you go. Now it's in the comments for anyone who wants to know. Oh yeah, I'm doing something. Right. And every time I bounce now, I want to say S audio clip? Yes, S audio clip dot play. Or dot start, excuse me. There we go. So let's run now. Oh dear. Acquired float. Sure, I'll say 0, 0.0. I don't care right now. Oh, and hello, Harry. Welcome to the live stream. And it crashes. <laughs> All right. 
illegal argument exception, master gain, not supported. Okay, I think that has something to do with the volume control stuff, so I'm just going to comment all this out now and see if it fixes anything. Who knows, maybe it will, maybe it won't. And it is... Okay, you probably can't hear that, but it played for a bit and then it just stopped, so... Hmm. So I don't know about that. Yeah, it plays once and then it stops. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. It's actually very interesting. I don't know why that's what happens. Oh. Hello, Blue Tomato. Hello, NetWin1990. Welcome to the live stream. Hmm. So I'm just going to take out the distance parameter for now. Because I don't suspect you'll need it much in 2D, so... Yeah. My solution to the bug, just delete the code. No need for it anymore. And physics component... There has to be some reason why this isn't working. Not right now. I really don't have anything new to share with Fredstone. As I've told a few people who've asked, I actually have played around a bit, and there's a few very interesting things I've discovered that I have, I've yet to see anyone do with Fredstone. But, well, although it's very interesting to me, I don't think it's interesting enough to really start making videos again about it. So, I don't know. If that keeps building up, maybe I'll do something, but right now, not really. I'm just, I'm just having fun with this. Okay, so that doesn't fix it. Huh. I wonder why it's only playing once. Hmm. Well, let's go to... Okay, let's, let's experiment a bit. Let's just say mclip.start every single time it starts playing. Or every time. And it doesn't change anything. Interesting. Okay, I guess I'm going to look up Java's audio clip in... or Java... Oh, sure. Java audio... What is this? Java clip. Hopefully that works. If not, yeah, okay. Because I really don't know why that's not working. I mean... Oh, maybe something in the setup. Maybe doing something, doing, yeah, doing something weird here. Clip.class, stream.format. Huh, that's weird. I wonder why I did it like that. Oh, well, sure, it's not a big deal. Anyways, clip.open stream. Um, hmm, okay. So what is the start function actually supposed to do? Okay, well, apparently it doesn't actually have a start function? Huh? Or am I just being blind and not seeing it? No? Wait. Ah, it's inherited from data line. Okay. Allows the line to engage in data I.O. There's nothing. Hmm. Okay, that's very strange. I don't know why that's happening. All right, well, we'll, we're starting the clip, and apparently that's not doing anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to... Uh, the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try the loop continuously thing, which, oh, I'm in data line now. Yeah. So, here. Let's say mclip.start... Actually, before that, mclip.loop... And I'll say clip dot loop continuously. So this will tell me whether or not whether the issue is like something with the start function or whether it's just like running out of the stream afterwards for some reason. I think it was spelled continuously. Oh no, that's how it's spelled? Oh it is. Okay, never mind. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, so it's definitely not an issue with that. So I think it's set frame position. I just did that. Again, you can't really hear the audio, so it's not really doing anything. But uh, set frame position. 
Hmm. Well. Clip loop. Hmm. Well, that's true, Harry, but, well, clip loop dot loop continuously does the same thing. Anyways, you know, at this point, since I've really did something with the Java API that I clearly don't know about, I'm going to just Google the answer. <laughs> the Java clip. There, restart clip. Okay. Hmm, what does your code do? Hmm. No, that's not quite what I'm looking for. Hmm. Dot, right? That's not what I'm looking for either. How old was I when I started programming? Whew. Oh, good lord. I don't know exactly. I, my best guess is that I did something when I was nine, but... I really don't know. It was sometime around then. That was the first time I ever very reluctantly sat down and did some programming because there was something I needed to do that couldn't be done normally. I see my questions about... Make. Most of my code is licensed under the Apache license, which basically means you can do what you want with it as, as long as you give me credit, or the BSD license, which basically means the same thing. The difference is the Apache license requires... Or, it grants you any patent rights, so if I patent something in my code, you are automatically have the rights to use it. And the Apache license also... It's, it's sort of insignificant, but... Well, if you do something really significant, change to like one of my code files, like say you take this audio clip class and make it into this big, giant, majestic, super audio class of awesomeness, <laughs> for instance. It says if you do something like that, you have to say you've done some significant changes to the file. So... That's sort of how the, that works. That's, of course, not the legal description. If you want the actual legally binding rules, you're going to have to read the licenses themselves, but that's usually the gist of it. That's usually what people are looking for when they ask me about that, from my experience. Anyways, I'm looking for the answer to this M-clip playing problem. And these really aren't giving me the, quite the answers I want to... I want, are they... Hmm. That's really strange because could I create? Well, because this code worked perfectly fine on Windows, and apparently it doesn't work on Linux. So, um yeah. In fact, that, that's an idea actually. Okay. This code right here that I'm running right now. This worked perfectly fine on Windows. Right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a git push here. So I'm gonna push this to GitHub, so push basic audio there so oh if any of you want to actually well if any of you want to test this out and see if it works on your computer that'd be great let me know because I'm really not sure why this isn't working it should be um no I don't know of any javagaming.org website actually Anyways, do hmm. Okay. Well, this function doesn't exit. It's basically doing clip dot drain, isn't it? Hmm.
All right, well, let's let's try. <laughs> You two have the same class without knowing? I'm not sure I follow you there, Technic. I will try explicitly importing java.sample.clip in case... Okay. I'll just try explicitly importing stuff. I don't think it should change anything, but it's worth a shot. Maybe... It I just made me think maybe it's somehow, some way, importing the wrong thing by accident for some reason. But yeah. Hmm. Really, I just want to do something that involves programming. I quite enjoy programming, so yeah, anything, just about, well, Oh, maybe not anything. I'm sure you can think of something I wouldn't like, but just about anything involving programming, I'd be pretty happy with. And I'm doing something. Right, I'm figuring out why mclip isn't playing more than once. Right, let's try the drain, the drain strategy. This is going to lag the game horribly, but perhaps it'll actually do something for once. No. It causes lag, and that's about it. <laughs> okay, so that doesn't solve the issue. Oh, by the way, if, hello, Leonardo. And just to remind people, if people have joined, if anyone wants to... Um, what's it, what is it? Ah, if anyone wants to download this code and test the audio clips thing to see if it works on your system, that would be really great. I'd appreciate that. Same exact code. Well, if you're not using my code, then it doesn't mean anything. It's only like downloading my code and using that that really makes a difference. But really, I mean, it's a permissive license. Even if you are using my code, it really doesn't change anything. So, you know, it changes a little, but not much that people usually care about. So, yeah. Right, I'm looking uh, in here. Java clip. All right, I was looking on this thing, I believe. All right, so this works okay. Hmm. Clip on his bit line, add open. Hmm. Okay. Rewind? Surely Clip doesn't have a rewind function, does it? Oh yeah, but then it plays forever. <laughs> so, which isn't what I want. What I really want is just a... Well, just to play once every time you hit the start button. Is it really a rewind function? No. No. Eleanor, thank you for the suggestion, but MP3 support really isn't that important to me. And really, this is... If I understand correctly, I believe JavaFX is an external library that you need to use. I'd rather not link to external libraries if I don't have to. I mean, this is just plain one audio clip. This really shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't require that much. That's what I'm just trying to say here. Hmm. I believe set frame position zero has something to do with it. Of course it works perfectly on Windows. <laughs> Maybe I have to do something like this. No. Well, that's strange. It seems to be working for everyone else except me. <laughs> so I don't know. All right, well, start. 
ah, that would be great, but I'm not using Java FX8, unfortunately. So, sorry. Let's try this out. Let's see what this does. Except lag. I know that. Oh, my word. It's working. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, okay, this is strange. I don't... I really don't understand why it's working now. If I use drain, it works. Let's just stop immediately. <laughs> well, this is working, sort of. I don't think it's working how it's intended, but it's working. Let's see if I can get a bigger area, because it's just beeping too much for me to know for sure. It seems to still be doing the sort of drain thing here. This is not what I want. Yeah, it's still draining, which is not what I want. So why does the stop function drain? Oh, this is, you know, this is strange. I planned for me this to be like this 10 second thing, we do something else for the rest of the stream, but no. It has to screw up randomly for no good reason. Come on. This is... This, what? <laughs> now, this is something I really don't understand why it's not working. All right. If clip is running, do this. Always start it. Is, is running not working? I'll test that next. I'll take this to make sure it's actually, actually working. Yeah, okay. So I don't think clip dot is running is working. When we're in is the condition. Sure. Doesn't really matter just as long as it works or it shows something really. It's never getting called. Okay, so m clip dot is running. That is my issue. My code is fine. It's my condition that's failing. Okay, good. That's good. That lets me know something about that. Is running. Ah, okay. So what I really need is I need something to tell if the clip is finished. Okay, good. So Java clip, then if clip, say, sure, something like this. Hmm. Okay. Not what, quite what I'm going for, but okay. Are you doing clip that open the same way they are? Mm, sort of. Hmm. Yeah, I think, you know what, I think what I'm going to do, unless I find a solution in the next, like, three minutes or something, I'm just going to say, screw audio for now, and I'll come back and try it again later. Is active. Okay, let's try that. Maybe that's what I really want, is active, wherever you are. So just playback. Hmm. That seems a little bit fishy right now. But let's see what it does. If it works... Well, oh my word, it's working. Well, <laughs> I was not expecting that to happen. <laughs> okay. Huh. I don't know if this is like a platform thing for, or something, but it seems to be working for me.
and it's lagging profusely when uh, that happens, so maybe I should do something about that. Hmm. Actually, what does this do? I'm curious. What do you mean by events? That's used to mean a lot of different things depending on what you're doing. <laughs> Okay, well, the audio clips code is working now. It only took me, <laughs> like, what, 45 minutes now? <laughs> and I've got five... I've got, well, okay, I guess i got a few more than five lines of code to show up, but basically no code to show for it. <laughs> well, all right. So we have audio working now. And my word, am I going to disable it immediately? Because good lord, is that obnoxious. I do not want to beep every single time I hit something. But maybe that's just me. Anyways, so what I think I can do, now that I know audio is working, now that I know all that stuff is done, yeah, I've decided, first off, about the scene graph. I think I'm not going to implement a scene graph in this, at least not right now, because, I mean, it's nice to have, especially for really advanced things like my laser network of death in my Let Em Dare game. But, eh, it's not that big of a deal. It's, so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sort of reorganize the engine a bit. Set it up so it's really easy to plug in a game to it. And then, well, we'll see. But I think that's what I'm going to do now. So first and foremost, scene. My word, do I need to get rid of all this ridiculous temp code. So yeah, just comment all of this out. Say no to temp code, viewers. Good lord, I have like almost a hundred lines of just temporary code to test things out. Kind of ridiculous if you think about it, but eh, I suppose it, it's something. Okay, so now this is just what I get with nothing. I don't want Hello World displayed every single time, so I'm going to fix that as well. Yeah. You're nice for testing out strings and such. No longer necessary. Whew. How do you work? Of course. All right. You're de debugging stuff. I know you're in core engine, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay. So I don't need to set camera position. Order program. Text file. For parsing, it really depends on how complex you need. Well. What you're probably going to want to do, my suggestion, if you're just going for basic text file parsing, is to write a tokenizer class that just basically breaks down everything based on... Right, breaks down a file... It takes one string in as an input, and then what you can do is you can have a function that's like next token. That'll give you the next sequence of characters that doesn't include some sort of like tokenized character. Like It doesn't include spaces, for instance. Breaks. All right, so for instance, back for example, so let's say your string is this target.clear thing right now. It will break it down to say target and then dot. Wait, different strings for like the target, then the dot, then the open paren, then another open paren, then the byte, then that, then the 0x00, and then that, for instance, maybe. I don't know, just something that, and, and then the semicolon. Uh, just something that breaks things down like this. So every string is broken down to different strings with well, smaller things in them like that. That's my that's my advice. Actually, I believe I actually have a tokenizer written in C++ somewhere that you can use. If I don't know if it's on GitHub yet or not. If not, I'll see if I can get it on there somewhere. But yeah, in fact, I'm pretty sure I have a tokenizer you can use somewhere. Ooh! Well, Harry, it's funny you should mention that. I just so happen to have a 2D RPG series. In fact, yeah, it is on GitHub somewhere. It's under Benny Q... Oh, wait, that wasn't my other repository, wasn't it? Hold on, I'm going to find this for you. Even if it takes the whole... No, it wasn't in this one. Dag now. <laughs> Harry, it's funny you should mention that. Yeah, I have a 2D RPG series. <laughs> it's a little old, but it's there. Okay. So fine, I'll do it 
the old-fashioned way. It's under CPU's Tough 5. Here we are, tokenizer.h and tokenizer.c. Yeah. I'm going to put those under my experiments to VM game class thing. I just... So there. And if I go to experiments, sure. Git commit. What am I going to commit it to? As, um, there you go. Now if you go on GitHub under experiments, you can get my tokenizer class if you care to use it. And play around with, with that. So yeah, I spend a whole bunch of time giving stuff to a viewer. That's nice. <laughs> There's anything wrong with that. It's just, I prefer if I didn't have to do that in the middle of the stream, but oh well. So anyways, you can go on a new line because you're taking up too much space. Hello, Omega Craftable. Welcome to the live stream. Thank you for joining us. All right. I think I've really just done all the cleanup I need to do. Just making double checking to make sure. Okay, great. Well, Omega, I spent the first 45 minutes of the stream trying to get five lines of audio code working. And now I'm, that I finally did that, I'm going to be cleaning up my scene class a little bit so I can use this in a more general fashion. That's my idea. That's the goal here. Anyway, scene. Yeah, that's basically sums it up, getting mad at audio. <laughs> right. I'm going to change my main class a bit. Actually, I don't need to, do I? Oh, okay. So really, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this temp code. Because this sort of temp code here, as I, I've been calling it, is actually the sort of code that will go into the game. You should be able to power your game with this sort of temp code. Hopefully in a less ridiculous manner than this, but you should still be able to do it. So scene, scene, new scene. Sure. So I'm going to pass in scene as the Thingy McJiggerton. Oh. Alex. <laughs> I just accidentally deleted all that code. Well, um, this is interesting. <laughs> so, okay, I guess I'm just going to steal that from GitHub too. Why not? I'm just going to steal everything from GitHub. Uh, Alright, so it's under Dare Engine and such. Oh, wow. I didn't know this was actually made into my top five most popular repositories. Thank you, guys. I'm glad you enjoyed the Dare Engine this much. So I'm just going to be stealing the code again, because I'm that type of guy. And yeah. The scene class is eventually going to be related to the scene graph, if I ever do that, but... For the time being, I've decided against the scene graph. It, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I am not formatting you. I know you want me to, but no, 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 no. I'm not reformatting you. Goodbye. Just screw you. You can burn in a hole. I am not formatting that code again. Screw that. <laughs> screw that. If that's it's going to be that bad, I'm just going to write my own test code. Because, uh, yeah, this is ridiculous. Oh, well, viewers, we're apparently we're getting new test code today. <laughs> so I'm going to have a bitmap test. Bitmap. And it's going to be dot slash res slash something or rather. Er, nah, nah, nah. Bricks2.jpg. Should, shouldn't crash. Oh, wait, it does, because it's bricks.jpg. Okay, that worked. That makes sense. So now what I'm really trying to do is to scene.add entity. This should actually be able to add new entity. Oh, wait, this, this is Java, not C++. Add component and such. New sprite component. Test. And it takes an... Oh, I just need to import stuff, don't I? No, I don't, actually. Good. What does sprite code take in, actually? I, I forgot. I've been working on other stuff for so long. Huh. Transparency type and layer. So, great. Render contacts dot 
parent C none, don't care. I really don't care in this case. And I'll just put zero. Nope, doesn't matter. <laughs> Great, we got a component. It's two more braces, to be correct, but that's okay. And entity, ah, uh, entity. Entity takes minimum and maximum stuff. Four, negative 0 0.1. There we go. Good enough. Now I should see something in the... No, I don't. Oh, I do need to import something. Engine. You're right, I, did, I didn't finish the RPG series, and the reason I've... I'm going to tell you the same reason I've told everyone else. I just didn't have anything left to teach in that series, really. I mean, the whole point was to show you how game mechanics work, I think. You have a pretty good idea of how game mechanics work at this point. So, yeah. Really, it was my fault for choosing a project as big as an RPG to represent game mechanics, because you can get away with simpler projects. So, you know. I just didn't want to drag out the series. There really wasn't much more to be gained from it than I was intending to, anyways. So, yeah. Anyways, okay, great. So that's working. We've got something displayed. In fact, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So everyone, this is going to be our first Dare Engine game. It's not much of a game as much as it is a image viewer, but it's a start. And, you know, why not? If I'm going to do that, I'll just go negative 1, negative 1, positive 1, positive 1. So there. We have an image displayed on screen. And it fills up the entire bitmap or er, window. There's, so there's two things I want to test here. Can we export as a jar? And can we make it into an applet? And really it's the second one that scares the crap out of me. So uh, yeah, let's just see what happens. Java. I say that a lot, don't they? Or don't I? <laughs> In case you can't tell, I'm a little bit tired, but that's okay. So what I think I need to do to export it... No. I know what you need to do to export a jar. You're going to need the classes, which I have. So in fact, I don't need to do anything there. I'm going to need the res folder, so I'm going to go ahead and copy you into bin. And I'm going to need a meta inf. And because I'm a lazy programmer, I'm going to steal that from somewhere else. Because I don't actually have that in any of my projects. Or do I? Is that in Pong? Do I have you in Pong? Oh, I do! Okay, well, well, that works. Okay, I'll just I'll steal you from there then. <laughs> I really don't think there's a clear answer to that. I've, I mean, the way people learn programming to the way they, well, like they really get it, that really seems to depend per person. The way I learned it was I learned it from scripting for games engines. I've Eventually, I just, well, I, I've scripted for game engines enough that I'd figure out how programming worked in general, and that's how it learned for me, but it depends on, on what you're doing. I've heard the new Boston mentioned a lot for people who just starting out learning programming and stuff, so maybe that'll help you out. But I don't know. I don't think there's really a general answer for that that works for everyone. But anyways, whoop. No, no archive manager. <laughs> meta -enf. All right, so... Here, I just need to change main class to engine.main. Actually, you know what? I am going to make it game.main. I'm going to... No, no. For now, it just needs to be engine.main. I can make it more specific later. Great. All I have to do... Metainf tells Java, when it's running a jar, where the main class is. That's its main purpose. It can do other things, too, to my understanding, but that's really what it's used for, just to tell people... or tell Java... Where in the jar is the main class? Anyways, I'm going to create an archive of this, because that's all you need to do is create a jar. In case you don't know, jar file, just a zip file, except with an extension renamed. Fun fact of the day. <laughs> yeah. I'll call this dare engine test.jar. Okay, cool. And now if this worked, I should be able to move this to the desktop, double click on you. First of all, market is executable. So make sure you have execute permissions, that helps. And then run. Hey, look at that. Oh, you probably don't need the debug text anymore, do I? No. All right, fair enough. But, yeah. 
So with that, we have the Dare engine working it already. And you know what? I changed my mind. I really don't care about applet support right now. I can add it later. It shouldn't be too hard in this framework. So what next? Hmm. First off, let, yeah, let's comment out the debug statement. I've I've proven that text works. I don't need to keep shoving it in everyone's faces. Just one last test to make sure things are still working. Okay, great. And you know what, viewers? I really can't think of anything. Maybe you guys can, but I honestly cannot think of anything that I still need to do before I start making games with this. That said, I don't want to make a game with it right this second. So, all right. Here's what I think I'm going to do. There is there are some more stuff I kind of want to do that don't exactly that aren't directly related to the Dare engine. They're really experimentations with software rendering. Like, I've recently been reading the Doom source code, and I've been I've been really wanting to just play play around with their technique of software rendering because their technique is totally different from the one I'm using in the 3D software rendering series. So I think, who knows? Maybe that'll teach me new something new that I might want to show in there or something. So you know what? I think I'm going to show you me researching and playing around with that. But I'm going to do that in a second stream, just so things don't get sort of mixed up and confused. So I'm going to stop the stream. Going to and in like probably take like a five minute break just to so my throat isn't killing me. <laughs> but yeah, and then I'll come back and I'll try and do that. And this time I actually will be back. This is five minutes, not an hour like last time. So yeah, that's my plan. If you're interested, you can show on for that. Otherwise, you can move on with your lives. <laughs> so thank you. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in five minutes, everyone.